Today, the presidential campaign started with the promise of at least sounding presidential. But that didn't last long. In a speech touted as a major economic address, Republican nominee Donald Trump used huge chunks of his time on stage attacking Hillary Clinton's proposals. The one common feature of every Hillary Clinton idea is that it punishes you for working and doing business in the United States. Trump did say he would seek to simplify the tax code, eliminate the estate tax, and reduce regulations on businesses, adding that more details would be available in coming days on his website. The speech came at a critical time, as you know, when his campaign has lost momentum that was generated at the Republican convention, and has had to answer questions about whether he would even have to step down as the nominee. It's been a bad couple of weeks. Trump has dealt with the negative fallout of his criticism of the Khans, a Muslim family who lost their son, a soldier in Iraq. He's also created hostility within the Republican Party when he initially withheld endorsements for well-known GOP candidates, including House Speaker Paul Ryan and New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayotte. Take a look at some recent polls and the damage becomes evident. Nationally, Hillary Clinton is now at 50 percent, while Trump has fallen to 42. There are even problems in traditionally red states like Georgia, where Clinton is at 44 percent and Trump's at 40. And consider that Georgia has only gone Democratic three times in 64. Twice it was for native son Jimmy Carter. So here's the question. Is a speech on a serious subject what the Trump campaign needs to get a jump start, or is it too little, too late? Joining me to give the Trump campaign advice, whether they want to or not. <laughs> Jesse Mermel, she's in the not category, former <laughs> communications director for Governor Patrick and a Hillary Clinton supporter. Good to see you, Jesse. Okay. Jeff Deals, the state rep, who is the co-chair of the Trump campaign here in Massachusetts. Good to see you, Representative. Tina Opie is a professor at Babson College who started in the Bernie Sanders camp, but who is now with Clinton. Tina, it's good to see you, too. You. Uh, quickly down the list, 91 days till we vote. Is this thing over? Is Hillary Clinton the next president of the United States? It's absolutely not over. Those of us in Massachusetts uh, should just think about two words, Michael Dukakis. <laughs> 17 it points is not after over. His now, do you really believe that, or you say that because the Clinton people like to say it's a tough race no, so we can keep raising money? No, I absolutely money. believe that. I mean, listen, I was a Hillary Clinton supporter in 2008. I went into that thinking Hillary Clinton's absolutely going to be the nominee. Lesson learned. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to fight hard all the way through November 8th uh, because we're genuinely not taking anything for granted. And it's too important to, to even go down that road. Well, that makes you happy. Now you have nothing to say. Is that it? I mean, yeah, that's perfect. We're all done. Okay. <laughs> Jeff and I agree on so much. Okay, we'll skip you for a second. How about it, Tina? Bernie, now uh, Hillary Clinton. Do you think this thing is over? Honestly, do you think this thing is over? She's got a pretty I significant hope to lead. I God, so it's over. I mean, if I'm honest. I mean, I, I agree, um, though, that we're going to have to fight until the actual election day to make sure we not take anything for granted. Is the economic speech a first step? You know, while people are taking it apart, like they do everything, the simplification, reduced number of brackets, it's not really simplification. The state tax is only if you're more than five and a half million dollar states, which is very few people. It's, it, it has the right sound. And the economy is one of the few areas, Representative, where Donald Trump, for most of the campaign, has had an advantage with the American people. So is this the jump start or is this just another day? No, look, uh, the fact of the matter is Donald Trump is the change agent. You know, it's been eight years of Barack Obama, no growth over 3%. Uh, this year, I mean, the last four quarters, 1.2 percent. People seriously want a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. We need to grow more jobs. And he's been talking about it. The other neat thing about his uh, speech today was talking about full-time daycare. He's speaking to middle-class families, both people working, wanting to make that a full deduction for daycare for their kids because it's just that important. It's, it's over 10 percent of your income. Which is a great income. idea, except economists came out immediately and said that's actually a benefit that only benefits the upper class. Uh, middle-class families would get uh, less than half of what upper-class mm -hmm. families would get, and low-income families would get nothing. Well, I'll tell you, I, in my neighborhood where it's people that get up in every day and go to work, both the husband and wife, they'd love to see a full deduction on daycare, and uh, I think it's a good step in the right direction. You know, even if Jesse Rommel is right, Tina, on the details of the child care mm -hmm. thing, with all due respect to the American people, I don't think most of them are reading PolitiFact tonight. Right. What they are hearing is he supports an elimination of the cap, mm -hmm. whatever that is, the right. $6,000. But let's assume whatever that cap is, the limit, get rid of it. That's an appealing notion for busy people who are buried in child care costs, is it not? It, it is appealing. But I think we really have to pay attention to some of the details that Jesse gave. And it sort of seems like we're tag teaming here. <laughs> and that's not the intention. Um, but I do think we really have to challenge people to, re to read some of those details. Because on the surface, it might seem great. But I think as with many of the things that uh, Trump has said in the past, you dig a little bit deeper and it's not quite as Should appealing. they read the details too? For example, Hillary Clinton said in her speech at the convention she's going to fund a lot of things with taxing the wealthy. Nobody says there'll be a Democratic House and the Republican House is never going to pass an increase in taxes on the wealthy. That's so should true. they look at those details too? I th the people need to look at everybody's details. 
Do you yeah. teach something opinion. about discourse and engagement? or so? Isn't that part of your shtick out yes. there? I don't mean shtick, but isn't that part of your whole thing? Part of my And so give Trump, in the spirit of democracy, give Trump a little advice on the engagement uh, notion. So I think he might need to address the whole uh, charge that's been made that he's not temperamentally unfit to serve in office. That How does he narcissistic. do that? How would you do that? I think he might actually want to address that head on, bring that up. These are some of the things that I've heard, and here's why it's not true. Um, I think he also might want to address the fact that pe many people think he needs to apologize I to the cons. So being authentic, authentic and honest and perhaps humble, which is not a word that I've heard uh, to describe his campaign might be very beneficial to you know, him. You know, this whole uh, uh, con thing, well, I'm sure the Jesse Ramels, I shouldn't speak for you, but I will, and then you'll correct me, <laughs> would say it was the brilliant, well-organized, mm -hmm. unbelievable uh, Clinton uh, convention that uh, did Trump in, at least for a week. It was the cons. It was Mr. Mm -hmm. Con and then Mrs. Con, who were both brilliant. I mean, so, they may be in the history books if your guy uh, loses and yeah. Hillary Clinton's elected. How does he do this? I mean, it's still there. A lot of people are talking about the little constitution. You don't That's attack gold star families no matter what they say shouldn't he break his own rule and say I'm really sorry I said this you know I, I come from the business background like he came from not obviously with his degree of success and then I'm up on Beacon Hill and it's taken me about six years to learn you can't engage on everybody with every little criticism all but the time but he does and he does you lied about you can you can uh, whatever it was with a with a uh, bait him with a tweet you can bait him with anything mm -hmm. I mean he took the bait on cons and, and that's, that's the thing him. when you're in business I mean your reputation is everything obviously when you're a massive you know successful builder in, in the entertainment industry you don't want to you know hear criticism. You would like to see him apologize, but I think though. he needs to learn that in the political arena, you have to let a lot of things kind of roll off your back. Also, I know it's unlikely, but just since we're on it for a second, don't you think since he doesn't apologize for anything, something as basic as apologizing to the cons would be greeted with this rush of oh my god? Oh yeah. Maybe we should take another look at this We'd guy. We'd be falling all over himself, just like we fall all over ourselves when uh, when he makes a speech at a teleprompter. You know, something that any other politician wouldn't get uh, credit it's for. true. We're all standing there, you know, clapping and and cheering, saying he finally. Yeah did it. You know, apologizing is something that any human being should have in their toolkit. Uh, he might want to adopt <laughs> Love it. the expression, yeah. toolkit. You know, and also the issue about Trump's, uh, whether he has any chances, in great part depends also on what Hillary Clinton does. Yeah. Should she be risk averse? Should she stay on the <laughs> offensive? Here's, a, I would argue, not a risk averse statement she made the other day last Friday and Donald Trump's response. Here it is. And I have said um, during the interview and in many other occasions over the past months, uh, that what I told the FBI, which he said was truthful, is consistent with what I have said publicly. So I may have short-circuited it. She took a little short circuit in the brain, and she's got problems. I mean, if we had real people, this would be a real problem for her. But I think that the people of this country don't want somebody that's going to short-circuit up here. I have no idea if we had real people, there would be a real, I have no idea what that means. But putting that aside, in terms of uh, his guy should apologize, she says, is consistent with what I've said publicly. It is not even close to consistent. She said there were no classified emails, there were. She said she had a single device, there were multiple devices. It has been proved, why doesn't she just say, you wanna know something? I wasn't totally forthright with the American people, it was not intentional. Why shouldn't she apologize if he should? Well, she has apologized no, for the email. No, she said I made a needs... mistake. She, is, she continues to say what she said to the public was truthful, and it's not. Doesn't that put her in a tough position? Well, here, here's the thing. The, the Clinton campaign, I think, is spending too much time parsing words and explaining, well, it was categorized this way, but then afterwards it was recategorized and this and this, and there were three emails and there were this Thank many you. emails. They need to get away from that Thank and focus so on the much. fact that she's admitted this was a mistake and talk and about And tell the, the truth lessons. about what she said to and the public. And talk about the lessons that she's learned and how she'll apply them as president. She needs to, to, when she talks about this, talk about the lessons, focus on her acknowledgement that it's a mistake, something Donald uh, Trump doesn't even have in his constitution I understand. We're talking do. about your candidate. For Shouldn't she come clean on this thing? I mean, it, this she wasn't truthful with the American people. So I'm going to sound professorial here. Please do. I think that both political candidates need to be much more honest and transparent. And, and I'm sure that's not going to get me a lot of favors. But... She needs to, I think, say exactly what happened. I think, though, we have to ask ourselves why are both candidates resisting doing that? Because the media 
will probably excoriate them. Well, that's what they're afraid of. Maybe they should tell the truth to begin with. And then well, we'll hey, listen, it. listen. Very quickly before you gotcha. go, this is a Washington Post story just the last couple of days. It follows up on a New York Times story a month ago. The New York Times said <laughs> he's going to get, ele if he's elected, he's going to resign from office the next day. The Washington Post a few days ago says he's going to drop out of this race because he doesn't want his business interests to be destroyed. He can't deal with the humiliation of losing. Well, quickly, right. do you see that even remotely in his, quote, toolkit? I, was that an email that came from the DNC between the media? I don't Washington know where that Post came from. Washington Post reported it. Sort, this senior sounds, sources, this, right? This Any sounds like some, this, explain away. It sounds no, like some yes. fantasy at the DNC that would, uh, you know, but no, it's, there's no reality to I that I 100% guarantee that the DNC is not fantasizing about President Pence. <laughs> nice to see you, Jesse <laughs> Dewell, Representative. Thanks, Good to Jen. see you. Team, it's great Thanks to see so you. Much, Thanks so much for your time.